And welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for the return of Boros Aggro on our Rank Up Sunday stream. Of course, you I'm sure you remember this one from Tuesday Brews Day. We did awesome with it there. We played it in a league. We went 5-0. We're going to try it over in Mythic now. It's a little bit harder competition and we'll see how it, it continues to do. Um, it just felt really good last time. We're going with the same 75. There didn't really seem like anything that I really wanted to change. Tajik Legion's End was simply an all-star. Being able to um, mentor onto Hushbringer, Tithe Taker, and Robber the Rich make these creatures all um, even better than what they are. Like, they're all pretty good two-drops. Sorry. They're all pretty good two-drops. But whenever you start adding on counters onto them, which they, they really only get the one counter. Hushbringer can get a second. But they turn into even better cards <clears throat> i don't know why this always happens i'm not i guess i'm just not used to talking too much and so whenever i start talking a whole lot my throat uh can get all stuffy all right anyway uh let's go ahead and run it back let's see how see how it does you can see we're not playing embercleave we're not trying to be like super aggressive and finish the game out on turn five with Embercleave. <clears throat> we have a lot of good aggressive elements to our deck. And, you know, like we're, we're trying to be on the aggressive side. But we can still play a late game because of Experimental Frenzy. So we can still uh, outgrind people whenever, whenever we don't curve out. Because the, the problem with Embercleave decks is that you like have to curve out and then get to Embercleave to, to kill opponents. Because usually if you get to like the later part of the games, the Embercleaves are just dead cards. And you're going to lose. This deck can play a late game. We have good removal. Justice Strike is just one of the best removal spells in the format. Two mana instant. Kills almost everything. So it's just awesome. Giant Killer was incredible. Bone Crusher Giant is one of the best cards in the format too. Um... So we just we can play a really good late game as well. All right, here we go. <clears throat> yeah, I'm trying not to. Just getting choked up about how much I really like this deck, I guess. Okay. Just need a little bit of water. All good now. So yeah, we're going to play five matches over here. <clears throat> See how we do there. Those five matches. <laughs> this would be a perfect hand to draw Tajik. Tajik makes, makes Hushbringer such a better card because makes it like a, a real creature instead of just being like a one two that that doesn't do a whole lot you know start mentoring onto this thing makes it a lot bigger plus it prevents damage to it as well from something like a, a bone crusher giant or a deafening clarion or things like that so rakdos aggro looks like they got a good start with a one drop. I'd be very happy if they just pass the turn here. I'd be happy with that. Okay, so I'm going Tithe Taker. They have the 3 1 Flash creature. 3 1 Flash Knight. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Tithe Taker and Hushbringer is a little bit of a nonbo. It's our one slight nonbo in the deck. A hate bear. <clears throat> yeah, like basically Tithe Taker and Hushbringer, these can be considered hate bears. Hate bears are two mana creatures that make life more difficult for the opponent in a variety of ways. So I bet they had that 3-1 creature before and they just didn't. I 
didn't realize the tie taker wasn't gonna let them um let them work yeah i did try streaming streaming 60 fps with the new computer and the computer could handle it but my internet upload speed didn't handle it very well unfortunately My my upload's only like 30 because I live up in the mountains. It's the best I can get. My download's like 200. Okay, I do think I have to kill Stormfist Crusader. Live in Roanoke, Virginia. Yeah, this is part of the secret layer bundle. <clears throat> hmm. Wish we could find another one of those justice strikes. Kill this spawn of mayhem. So I'm going with the Tithe Taker because the Tithe Taker can block the Knight of the Ebon Legion twice. Obviously our, our mana is a little rough. So I take two extra damage to kill the Fervent Champion. Hmm. Maybe I don't attack? If I attack, the Spawn of Mayhem grows. I guess I can't attack. Is that that thing being a five five is a disaster? Well, doesn't matter. They just drew. They just played a second mountain, so it looks like they had that in hand, and they were just looking for a second red source. We were getting there. Didn't quite get there though. 
All right, so we get some glass caskets and some prison realms in here. <clears throat> Deafening Clarion is an option for the sideboard if you expect more aggro like this. I don't know. We have a good amount of, of stuff here. We have things that do stuff. Yeah, Robert just kind of trades with something. Yeah, War Boss, there's just there's just not really there's nothing in the main deck I want to play over War Boss. I don't want to play more three mana cards than what we already have. And it's its place in the in the format isn't spectacular with Bone Crusher Giant being a very popular card. But I guess you could kind of say that about Tajik as well. Tajik has haste. Glad there's no 3 1. Guessing they have spawn of mayhems. No, well, maybe not. That's unfortunate because we put the other frenzy down to the bottom. There's two more in the deck still, though. Of course, playing the prison realm here, we get the scry. Oh, castle's not bad. I guess as far as the land goes, it's probably the best one. Yeah, castle good. You're doing blue-black discard control with Davriel and Narset for Historic Artisan. Awesome. Basically playing Prison Realm because it has the scry. I'm expecting more Spawn of Mayhems in their hand. Maybe not. Maybe they're sitting with a bunch of removal. <laughs> it's 
Storm says, I imagine the people inside the castle are pulling straws to decide who has to go outside and fight the Rakdos menace. Don't pick me, don't pick me. The reason not to hold the land in hand, you know, like we could just hold the land in hand and pretend like we have something, but the reason not to do that is because of Frenzy. Because we could top deck Frenzy and still be able to get like the other land drop off of the Frenzy and still play things. Frenzy is our best draw. We want them drawing land. I don't want me drawing more land, I want them drawing land. Yeah, because that thing is... Perfect power not to die. The giant killer. Come on. How many lands do we have in here? I guess we have 25. Okay. Blech. If only we didn't mulligan. If we would have had a seven card hand and we could have had the second frenzy in hand also. Could have just had our seven card hand instead of six. Would have had that second frenzy and would have been doing a lot better. Oh well. Yeah, bringing in Outlaw's Merriment against control decks. Decks with a lot of removal decks. Any deck that plays sweepers, that's where Outlaw's Merriment comes in. Gives you another angle of attack that's not just creatures. So basically, any deck that's trying to... That, that does a good job killing creatures, Merriment, is a good um, avenue to move towards. No, I don't think we have too many lands in the deck. With us being a frenzy deck, we want to we want to have those lands. All right, good. They scry that to the top. Make them exile that. All right, it's just a land. Please do not have Bone Crusher Giant. All right, well, not as bad as Bone Crusher Giant. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to play the four three first. I do one extra damage by attacking, by playing the 4-3 and then next turn attacking for 7 instead of attacking for 6 and then 6.
But this gives me flexibility, of course, with the stomp and the giants. No, not fires also. If they didn't have fires, I was pretty positive we were winning this, but with fires, maybe we don't. What's up, Zerf? It's going well. Oh, yes. Use a burn spell on the Tithe Taker, please. Yeah, they 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 overlap a lot. War boss and Merry Mint. Um, war boss better against a little Teferi. I don't. The war bosses probably don't need to be in the sideboard. I like Merry Mint more. This really hurts that they had fires of invention. If they didn't have fires, this game would have been over. But they are looking for Kenrith. If they find Kenrith, we're in a lot of trouble. But if they don't find Kenrith, we have outs of more burn spells. I'm not sure if that's the way I'm supposed to go or if I'm just supposed to have the two damage be able to fire off at them. I definitely like having the Hushbringer here to stop future Cavalier of having their ETB triggers. Well, I'm glad we killed that 5-5. Five five. Well, we could. Yeah, this, this game's pretty over. Fires of Invention is just a broken magic card. That was... That was the one. <clears throat> I know my responsibility. Trust me, I well, if they would have gone Clarion with Lifelink, I would have had to kill the 5-5 five five anyway. There's, there's no difference. Oh, that's why you would not have saved at the stomp. Okay, yeah, I gotcha. Clarion's tough, especially a lot of Clarions over and over and over again. We played this matchup twice last time and we won both times. What did I do for sideboarding? Definitely brought in Disenchant. I don't think I, I did too much. Oh my gosh. Zerf, that the crazy man. Thank you so much. All right, we have ten brand new subs. Thanks to Zerf. Happy holidays. Well, thank you so much, there, Zerf.
Okay. Um, anyway, I guess I gotta figure out what I'm doing here. I know I want the disenchants, but I... What am I taking out? Taking out Tithe Taker. I think I took out two Bone Crusher Giants. Yeah, because they don't kill a whole lot of stuff. Alright, we'll do that. Thank you, Zerf. Yeah, Rakdos Aggro is good too, Joek. All right, so Justice Strikes, of course, kill their creatures. Obviously wish that we didn't have triple temple. But that's where we're at. I do want more lands because of Experimental Frenzy. This is kind of an awkward Experimental Frenzy hand where I would like to play Frenzy next turn, but of course I would like to just sit back and use all these removal spells first. But if I wait to be able to use all the removal spells... gonna play the frenzy the frenzy get destroyed we still have you know stuff in hand Worked out pretty well. Sorry, I'm late. Gosh, the fairy is such a beating. I'll protect you. I, mean, I could just play the giant killer as just a a one-two, but no, I think I it's not making this up a lot more game. valuable of a card than that. Right on schedule. Bad idea. Or at least we took a land, they were going to hit a, another land drop. But now that's gone. At least we get to see this Aurelia animation over and over and over again, so that's cool. Seriously? A third one of those? Why? Now they have millions of mana.
Here we go. They can do whatever they want now. We have a lot of ways, well not a lot anymore, we have a couple of ways to kill big creatures still. I do want to get to Fairy off the battlefield so they can play these cards on their turn too. Really hoping that's their last to Fairy. I mean, they, they could technically have one more. But certainly hope not. That Sphinx isn't as scary. Huh. If I play Frenzy here, I guess we'll just have a really on backup in our hand. It really seems kind of weak here, though, with tons of Aether Gusts and Teferis. Maybe I, maybe I should board it out, but the thing is, is it really does survive all these Clarions, unlike these other creatures. Get out of here, Kenrith. Justice has been stricken. Yay. Something to do. Yeah, the Hushbringer Tithe Taker part's a little... That is a little bit of a nombo. That... Yeah, stopping that afterlife. Is kind of rough. Something to kill that, please. Nope. Kenrith is so good. 
We had the first Kenrith covered. We're gonna need better frenzy turns. Which we should have better frenzy turns eventually. That's somebody who's confident that they are not dying. Alright, this is where we need, like, Tajik and stuff. So that's 14 lands. We count this one down here in half the deck. So we have 11 lands in the next half of the deck. The good news is they didn't they didn't play like another threat last turn. They don't seem to have like another threat, so if we just kill the Kenrith, you know, we're gonna you know we'll be stable again. And obviously we have a whole lot of removal that kills Kenrith. <clears throat> In the deck. You've got to be kidding me. Giant killer. We're, we're at least going through the deck pretty fast. You know, we went through six cards there. We got two more giant killers, two more justice strikes, a couple of prison realms. matter where we block here but we got to block them both they have trample They're basically making sure that they don't die. I don't think the intervention really does anything. I just want to get this off of the deck, I think, in the least amount of mana possible to give me more ways to find these other cards. No lands over here.
We're gonna leave back the robber of the rich to, to chump block if need be. We're gonna have the integrity. <clears throat> that could pump it up if it's a Kenrith. So we so like the trample and stuff, but I'm gonna have the intervention on on uh upkeep. Giant, getting Giant Killer in play is just more valuable than getting Bone Crusher Giant in play because of Giant Killer's ability to tap these things. Oh, I forgot about the... Yeah, that's true. I did forget about the Aether Gust under the robber. That is true. Yeah, I guess they... <clears throat> they probably wanted to kill the giant killer there. I want to either guest one of my frenzies to get rid of one of them. What? I guess they want to kill their Cavalier in my Tajik. Is that worth it? That can't be worth it, right? Probably don't need to attack there. I was, I was of course, hoping that they were going to kill the Tajik. That they were going to block Tajik and not block Robber. That's what I was hoping. Uh, we could probably just wait. At least they have to spend mana for their spells now. They don't just get to activate Castle. With no regard. Boom.
Ugh. Okay, come over here. Yeah, good job, Hawkeye. We had a little. Oh, I did not bring in the prison realms. I guess because they have to ferry to bounce them. War boss worked well for you in this matchup, even with all their clair. Like where they're just playing a ton of clarions and bone crusher giants. I guess it probably works better than Tithe Taker, though. I guess. All right. <laughs> Four frenzies is too many. After the game after frenzy won us the ga that game. We had to dig so far in our deck and find more removal because of Frenzy. Yeah, I guess the only reason not to play Merriment is to Fairy, really. It kind of depends on what kind of game my opponent's playing for Merriment. I wouldn't mind drawing that land. Uh, yeah, I do not agree. I do not think four is too many. It, it doesn't matter that you draw the second Frenzy, because you can't play the cards in your hand anyway after you play Frenzy. You're just going to play a whole bunch of spells off the top. It doesn't doesn't matter. Hitting, hitting more Frenzies is annoying, as we saw. <laughs> there you go. Thanks. No carbon required. Say hi to Hawkeye. Oh. I was all ready for my integrity to save my my robber. That didn't work. I am not going to sit this. Let's try this. I would love to be able to giant killer that in response. Sad face. We can't. We can't do what we want, Hawkeye.
something. Okay, let's see. Not keeping the frenzy on top kind of shows that we have another one. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. This, this Teferi card's pretty good. Hey, Santa. Dang. Need to get rid of the Sphinx of Foresight. Stop letting them scry every single turn. That's more like it. Yeah, it's best to play the land before the Frenzy. To get the... You know, play the land out of hand. Because if... If we do hit a land here on top, it's okay to draw a land for turn. That's better than hitting like a spell that we that we would have wanted to play that we don't get to play. Still have the Hushbringer. I've got it. Teferi is also just really good against Frenzy, how it can bounce a creature back to my hand, and then I don't get to play that creature anymore. I don't know if I should wait. And just have Giant Killer there, see if they draw another big creature. I'm glad we got this robber here, though. This works. Frenzy's so good. Boo. Fairy so good too. No, I am not 
All right, at least the fairy's out of here now. Never out of here. I've got time. Hmm. Time for Plan B. Don't worry, I got this. At least they haven't been drawing big creatures. Which has helped. Not a good time for disenchant. Hey, 619. Happy holidays. Bounce the frenzy. Trust me, I have a plan. Have less than nine minutes left. That's been a long match. If I had a backup frenzy, I would be, you know, I would have destroyed it. Talk about a card that's not good against. <clears throat> against a fairy right there. Nah, we, we're not going to deck. We're going to kill them. We're good. Here we go. So four to blow up frenzy, two for justice strike. I still have four mana left over. You want me to phase you out of time? We don't have to go up frenzy. All right, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, we got lethal.
Y'all, there's some of y'all that are big frenzy haters. Hope y'all reconsider. After we saw frenzy just win those games two and three. Frenzy's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, four mana, draw 20 cards, basically. Yeah, but you play four because, because having one Frenzy is just so valuable. The hand was awesome if we had red mana. We had a really good curve, two drop, three drop Frenzy, but we did not have red mana. Yeah, we have some weird stuff. Yeah, Robber is kind of weird with Frenzy. But the thing is, is whenever whenever you have Frenzy out like that and you're just like going through like your whole deck, it doesn't matter that Robber doesn't trigger. It doesn't matter. You have millions of cards. Like, your life's good. So if I attack with Robber, they they double block with Giant Killer and 1-1. One, one. I could Bone Crusher the Giant Killer and basically Bone Crusher and kill both of those. Was that is that even worth it, or is it better to, to Bone Crusher and kill the Innkeeper? Is the real question. So if I kill the if I kill the innkeeper, then I'm probably not attacking. Yeah, they get to draw a card with Love Struck Beast. But our robber is also is kind of drawing cards. And then of course we're gonna kill kill the beast here. Okay. Should have killed Innkeeper. Should have killed Innkeeper. I think it's pretty safe to say that now.
<clears throat> yep. Good good lesson to learn though, you know, like that's that's the thing about playing magic, it's kinda difficult to always tell exactly which line to do. And that's that's kind of the, like what makes my life a little difficult with playing with how I play so many different decks all of the time. You know, I, I kind of want to see like what would happen there with like the robber if we keep that in. Like, what's the robber going to do for us? But you know, as as we learned here, that no, I should have just killed the innkeeper. Not you know, not worry about the robber. And yeah, like that's that's just what I needed to do. But good lesson to learn. So like next time that that situation will ever come up. I'll certainly just kill the innkeeper. Yeah, we've got to bolt the keeper. I'll keep the frenzy on the on the top because our frenzy is going to get destroyed most likely by the flaxen intruder here. So we have a backup. I was thinking that they'll probably just tap my Tajik with the giant killer and then attack in and, and kill it. So the frenzy did exactly what I really wanted. It, it hit a land drop and. But okay, that's going to end it. Okay, so their deck is very, very reliant on Innkeeper. That's how they have it here with all those adventure cards. So, <clears throat> got to kill Innkeeper. Certainly makes me want to play Glass Casket. They do have like that 1-2. That makes me want to play even more removal spells. We got Venerated Luxodon is like the thing the giant killer kills. These are also kind of removal. So I think how this, this game plays out for us winning is us being just Boros control, which is why I think I want these Merry Mints instead of like Tajiks is just something that can keep getting more, more and more creatures turn after turn and us staying alive long enough. I think like this is where like this is where probably in the sideboard having war bosses and Merry Mints is probably just overkill and that maybe having um, having Clarions in the sideboard would be a better option because this this would be a perfect matchup for Clarion. So probably having like the four war boss and the three merriment is is too much of that same kind of effect and that we probably don't really need war bosses and should be playing some Clarions. Yeah, Hushbringer is just a body. Which we had Ixalan's Binding.
This doesn't look like the... Maybe it is. I mean, I guess they had Pelt Collector. I was going to say, this doesn't really look like the real proliferate version of Selesnia. Looks like a more adventure-focused. This doesn't seem like Huatli's Raptor, Stone Coil Serpent, from what we've seen. Maybe they just had all of their adventure cards last game, and they do have those. Federal in close to health and safety violations. The FDA came in, sent the innkeeper to, to jail. Hushbringer also does that. Hushbringer stops Luxodon. Blah. Uh, they do have Serpent. That's unfortunate. Well, how about that? How about that? I was thinking that, like, we could pump up the castle to make this Bone Crusher Giant at 5 3, like, whenever we want to trade with Lovestruck Beast. That's not a good block. The Aurelia had Trample, the Hushbringer didn't. So they just saved one life by blocking the Trample creature. Not a good block. Alright, we got rid of. Innkeeper and life was better. My one Aurelia got there. It's like Robber of the Rich isn't really doing anything either. We just just had to have a couple bodies, I think. But it's not like Robber of the Rich does anything fancy. <clears throat> yeah, I could have Disenchant for Serpent. We can kill an innkeeper. That's always goal number one. As we found out the first game, got to kill an innkeeper. Just strikes good, but I would like a land. Yuck. Yuck. I 
I can't really think of any reason to wait. I... It's possible I'm supposed to save the giant killer for that. Alright, Wincon in play. Now let's play defense. Oh, I should have dealt the one damage to the raptor. Or either either one of these. I should have dealt the one. I, I just did that really quickly. Do the one damage to the raptor, then justice strike it. Or even do the one damage to the giant killer and then bone crusher giant it. That was, that was not good. So basically the problem with tapping the... I, I would have preferred to tap their giant killer before combat, but the problem with that is that then they would have just responded by tapping my 1-2 and I would not have been able to block with it. Tap my four three. Got out of here, Flaxen Intruder. Pumping up the life linker. And there we go. Removal and merriment. Obviously, it helped that my opponent mulliganed a lot. Obviously, that helped. Hmm. So, I kind of want to play a couple Clarions in the sideboard for that kind of matchup. Just aggro decks in general. If we play Clarions, I feel like I just just play four Merry Mint, three Clarion, and I just don't need these war bosses. Yeah, I'm gonna change that. I'll update deckless command. Thanks, Hogzen. Yeah, that's Outlaw's Merriment. Thanks, Hogzen.
I'm making a, a brand new deck list instead of just updating the other deck list because the other deck list was still the, the one used in a previous video. So I want to keep that link there. Double robber could steal a whole lot of stuff, though. Any thoughts on having additional gods willing in the sideboard? Um, I don't think it's really worth the sideboard slot, but you are correct that it's it's amazing against the adventure creatures. You know, like a boat. You know, using a gods willing to to keep them from stomping your creature and then getting their stomp exiled is pretty amazing. Thanks, Dandanel. Thanks for the bits. Do I let them have Charming Prince kill my Tajik? Is the main question. I think so. Just to, just to spend three mana this turn instead of two. Mostly. We're just going to trade there. Next turn I can Bone Crusher, plus I have like their Charming Prince as well. This isn't a fight you can win. This might be a bad idea. Hmm. I didn't see that coming. I don't know, they're playing Charming Prince. <clears throat> Maybe Hushbringer is great. Probably not, though. I'll just put those on the bottom. Ugh. Yeah, y'all are right. Y'all were right. Should have had Hushbringer. Kept it. Yeah, I guess this is this is just. I mean, I guess if they're playing Charming Prince, they gotta be playing a whole bunch of ETB creatures, right? Why could I have not drawn a land? Ugh. Why could I have drawn a land? At least they don't get Liliana. Your card's really good against discard decks. Experimental Frenzy. No. They have, oh no, they have Command the Dread Horde. The own card's even better. Command the Dread Horde. We take a Liliana and they still have Command. All right, so putting the Hushbringer down to the bottom was a miss take. You'll thank me later. Oh, I can't play instance. It's very fun. Gonna have to burn them out. 
Burn them out, out, like out, it. burn them out, out, out. No, don't flicker the bell hunt. They keep on having these cards that kill me. I don't like it. not good auto tapping. I should just tap both castles and let the Sacred Foundry there. Can I, have just, I can have Justice Strike and Bone Crusher Giant team up to kill the Aurelia. I think it's probably best to block while I can in case something weird happens. Oh wait, no, I can't have those team up to kill Aurelia. Because we don't get to play instance. <sighs> oh, Hushbringer. How I... How I was wrong. So I have a really hard time killing Aurelia, as we saw there that game. And therefore, I don't really want my opponent to be able to get Aurelia with Command the Dread Horde, because that's a really difficult card for me to kill. So we're just going to take those out. These integrity interventions don't seem to matter too much either. Hmm. I mean, I guess if they use... It seems like they have a good amount of enchantment removal. At least at least they have Teferis. If they use... If they have Teferis, bounce prison realms, and they're not bouncing these things... I don't know. It's basically, do I want to play prison realm or integrity? I'll just play the integrities. <laughs> yeah, Command the Dread Horde is really good. So I could get the Giant Killer in play right now. Or 
here. Let's go ahead and do that. I don't know if they'll have a lot of things to swift end. Ooh, rewarded. Man, think if we would have had that one extra mana to be able to play that Liliana that turn whenever we took it with the robber. Hey, Bleeding Black. Uh, yeah, not, not sure my opponent's playing Citadel also. We didn't see that. Maybe they're... Because they, they had Command the Dreadhorde and they had... They command the Dreadhorde and they had Liliana, so I'm not sure if they're playing Citadel also. I don't know how many six drops they're really playing. So at least Robber the Rich doesn't die to Cry the Carnarium if they randomly have that card. Wow, still no blocks. Yeah, I mean, randomly have that card because... The reason why I'm saying randomly have that card is because of they're playing all these kind of cards. That would make playing Cry the Cranium worse. Oh, that still that still triggers, even though Masker Girl's not on the battlefield. Well, good. We didn't have to show them Merry Mint. They only sh they only saw the one frenzy, the first game. Yeah, the dead girl still went on a massacre. My opponents decided not to play white mana. Tajik so good. Temple of Silence. Man, Hushbringer works so well with Temple of Silence. Those two have some good synergy. Basically just looking for Frenzy and Merriment. We're doing good here. Because of Sweepers, I don't think I should play another Hushbringer <clears throat> out right now. I can no longer 
stand by and watch. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. Wow, Sarah Ascendant, like the the one mana flyer. No, I am not making this up as I go. Now that's that's a pretty popular casual card, and just card in in uh, in some modern decks. But I didn't, that's a thirty five dollar paper card. I mean, I assume it's amazing in Commander, right? It's just a one mana six six flying lifelink. You just have to have 30 or more life, which you start with 40. So that probably seems like a really good commander card. Probably better in 1v1 commander than four person commander, because if you just start by turn one playing a 6 6 flying lifelinker, you're probably going to have people gang up on you. Hush is in the main deck. Yeah, I think what. I think there's, yeah, like a Felidar or something. Felidar Sovereign, that if you have 40 or more life, you win the game. I think Sarah Senate is 10, 10 euros. That makes. That's more in line of what I would have thought it would have cost. We'll put an Aurelia down to the bottom. Uh, the prices on goldfish are, are sometimes... <clears throat> they're sometimes uh, inaccurate because of how they use like TCG player and then like if if there's like l low supply of a card it can really like and there's just like some vendor that put it on for way too expensive it, it can really have their algorithm their price algorithms kind of messed up Oh, it's 35 for the playset. Oh. Whoops. That happens too. Sultai. I want to kill both of these. But I can only stomp one. I want to stomp them both. I, I would have liked that trade. Paradise Jewel for Robber the Rich. I would have liked that trade. I don't know. If I kill Paradise Druid, then they can't just... Like, if I kill Risen Reef, then they could just have, like, you know, five mana mythic unbeatable card, like a Nyssa or... Cavalier Thorns or something like that next turn. Let's have it the following turn, though. Hmm. 
This is the matchup that we need, Hushbringer. Yeah, the reason why it would matter if it's one turn delayed is because, like, like if they had Nissa, if they waited a turn, you know, we'd have the Aurelia to play first before they played the Nissa, and then I, you know, they get to untap and make a three three, but then I get to have Aurelia plus Integrity kill the Nissa. All right, there's Hushbringer. Yeah, no crisis for you. Yeah, the opponent can see the cards. Exiled by Robber, yep. They're exiled face up. Why does why couldn't Nissa just be four and then start at five? Man, the times that I've said that has been like dozens of times that I've said that. Why why does Nissa have to be five and go to six turn one? Well now I wish I would have just used the Justice Strike and kept the in intervention. If I would have known that all this was going to be able to get through. Yeah, I guess we just, just try to draw another intervention. And hope they didn't have Hydra Crisis. They they really like whatever card they... they you know, they scryed a card to the top and then drew it before I was going to be able to take it with the robbers. That does kind of signal like maybe another Crisis, but I sure hope not. Well, we can't. If we had, we didn't have lethal on Nissa. We only had five damage to Nissa, and so it wasn't even going to be lethal like the next turn with Hushbringer, either. But yeah, if, if we could have killed Nissa, we would have there. Well, playing the Hydro Crisis here does open up another Bone Crusher Giant to being lethal. Or still in integrity, because we could you know we can use the integrity part instead of just the intervention part. So Bone Crusher Giant or Integrity. Those are the two cards that I need to draw. Um there's seven total in the deck. We've drawn two, so there's five more. 
So five out of 47, about one out of nine. So 11%, a little bit less. But right around 11%. Uh, you don't, yeah, you don't need white for intervention. Just the integrity, you can use either red or white. So it's that to give my, I was going to give the Hydro Crisis plus two, plus two. That's how that card does. Wins it. So yeah, they get to ultimate Nissa here if they want to. But now that we have that white mana, now it turned on Tajik and Aurelia. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or, let's see. Wait, so how many? We had five before, so then six, seven, eight. So 12. So we have 12 outs. We have zero outs. Okay, now we have zero. We had 12 before that crisis. Now we have zero. Now we have zero. Three, six, nine. Lock here, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I couldn't kill the Nissa Ragnarok. I've never had a chance to kill the Nissa. Even if I was attacking it the whole time, I haven't done 9 damage since the Nissa's been out. When the land speaks, I shall listen. I'm really, really, the, the big thing was I used Justice Strike instead of Intervention. If I would use Intervention, I could have had lethal that turn but it, i didn't know that they were going to be doing you know playing that growth spiral and letting me get all that damage in no because i mean i would have i would have been able to attack it down to one but i only had one power that would have been able to attack it and they would have been, been able to take it up to two Well, the reason, yeah, I mean, yeah, that would have been the turn. Yeah, if I would have done Justice Strike instead of Intervention, then I could have. But once I played the Intervention and they tapped out their, they tapped their creatures, then I had no more way to kill the Nissa.
Alright, I'm going to take out Tithe Taker and play some Prison Realms and a Clarion. I... I don't know about this God's Willing or these Integrities. Uh, let's just go with this. Yeah, with for today with us... Yeah, it depends on what we're doing, whether we're playing in Ranked or playing a an event. With the events, we play until five wins or two losses. For today, with playing in Ranked, we're just going to be... We're just playing five matches with each deck. So this is the last match with this deck. Jeskai did good except for against Gruul. That was the matchup that we lost both times. That was the tougher matchup for us. Now let's keep these lands. I think we're just going to have to just get slam turn four frenzy. Yeah, the two standard leagues have taken a lot longer to play five matches. They've both been, like, we're pushing two hours now already with this deck. Um, Getting cards out of hand. I don't want them to play Paradise Druid or Leafkin Druid. They play Risen Reef. We can kill Risen Reef, at least. But then that means they get to draw a card. All right, kill that thing. Uh, mono green mid range. I, th I think we lost a Simic. But maybe we beat Simic. I don't remember. No, actually, I think we did beat Simic. What did we lose to? Maybe Jeskai fires. I don't remember what we lost to. I'm really glad to see Lovestruck Beast. It's a card I don't really care about. Uh, they probably don't have more 1-1s. One I'm not glad to see Nissa, obviously. Obviously, I'm not too glad to see Nessa. Harness the elements. I already knew my top card was Tajik, but usually it's it's good to just play the land before Frenzy whenever you're basically tapping out for Frenzy. Because if that top card was going to be a land, it's okay just to draw it for your card for turn and, and go from there. Anyway... Nessa too good. And a whole bunch of ether gusts stopped my frenzy plan. Just time walks. Yeah, N Nissa with time walks. I guess time walk really is legal. They had two time walks there. So you get time walk in standard. All right, so there we go, Boros Aggro. Um, I liked our, I liked uh, moving the Clarions over to the sideboard instead of the War Bosses. Uh, we lost to the Simic Ramp deck this time. I know we beat it the last time that we, whenever we played the deck on Tuesday, we did a better job of having like Hushbringer into Tajik. 
uh, kind of curves, and the Hushbringer really stopping them. And but Nissa strong, Nissa strong. We were in position to win that last game too, if it wasn't for their game one, if it wasn't for them having like that crisis right at the last minute. But obviously, that they they weren't just Simic; they were ca- they were uh, Sultai though, so they had those casualties of wars that were devastating. You know, playing multiple of those. But still a fun deck to play. You know, Boros, uh, you know, 3-2 in Mythic, nothing wrong with that at 60% win rate. That's awesome. We'll take that. And, uh, you know, Boros doesn't have the most powerful cards compared to other decks. You know, like, we don't have any Nissas. That card's ridiculous. But uh, the deck's still performing pretty well. All right, so those of y'all watching on, on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Hope you enjoyed the second uh showing for Boros Aggro here. If you missed the first one and you want to see the first time that we played the deck, we had a lot of really exciting games with that one. Um, just uh, with the playlist, if you go over to the, I mean, if you just go to the YouTube channel, just, you know, look from last Tuesday for Boros Aggro, but it's also in the playlist. It's in the, uh, it's in my favorite leagues because that one league was awesome. And you can also find it from the Tuesday Bruise Day playlist as well. So lots of ways to find that one. But that's it here for Boros Aggro. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.